Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here. Hello, hello and welcome to part two of my build of the Achilles Ridge Runner, painted up in a Borderlands 2 style to look a bit like a bandit technical. Now, if you remember in the last episode, we got everything painted up to the first coat of the contrast paints, and I'm painting it up in a Borderlands 2 style because I'm gonna be doing that kind of effect on my big master grade Cesarbi, and this kit is a test pig to see if I can actually do the, the watercolor coloring and ink outlines that give that classic Borderlands look it's not cell shading it's more like comic book art style now don't panic you've not missed anything this is of course video of the completed and finished build and finished paint job it's just the video i filmed for the very start here the introduction the video got screwed up so i've had to reuse this bit from the end so don't panic i'm going to show you how to get your model to look like this at the end now, of course, before we get going, I need to do a quick shout out for the two companies that support my channel and keep this channel going. First and foremost, you know and love them, emodels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your traditional model making needs. Tools, paints, kits, all the usual armor, tanks, aircraft, war stuff, all that kind of traditional model making, emodels is your place to go with huge discounts on every single thing in stock. You want to make sure you go to those guys for all your traditional model making needs. And of course, the channel is supported by my very good friends at Goblin Gaming. For all your tabletop gaming needs, be it kits or materials or anything you need for the tabletop model making and gaming scene, go to Goblin Games. There is a link in the description below this video. Not only will it save you 20% off recommended retail price from Malifaux, All Games Workshop and Conflict 47, there's massive savings to be had on everything in stock. Use the link in the description below the video. Not only will you get those massive savings, you'll also help me earn a little bit of income because it's an affiliate link and I get a tiny bit of income from each order you place. Anyway, enough nonsense. Let's crack on. I need to show you how we get to this step. So let's go and get ready to do some more contrast paints. So we're starting with Griff Charger Grey, as you can see here. Now, if you recall in the last episode, we started with Space Wolves Grey to get all these grey areas base coated with that first contrast colour. And you can see it's given a lovely, lovely effect. It's got some recessed shading there and it's tinted the flat areas just to give it that sort of grey effect. Now, what I'm trying to achieve with this is not a non-metallic metals effect. I can't do that. I can't even begin to do that. I'm trying to reproduce the way that metallics are done in Borderlands. They're not done as metallics. They're not shiny metals. Basically, in Borderlands, metallics are just represented with greys. Red greys, brown greys, blue greys, green greys, just all different shades of greys. They're, they're all mixed together, and it has a kind of watercolory look. The whole sort of colour feel, colour palette, and the colour texture in Borderlands is a watercolour effect. And... These contrast paints are perfect for that because like we said in the last episode, they are transparent. They're a bit like shades, but not really. They don't behave like shades, but they're sort of transparent like shades. But they're more like diluted inks. And that's what I'm trying to take advantage of here is that transparency of these paints. Now, the first coat we did in the last episode, that was the Space Wolves Grey, and that's given us this light grey with dark grey recess shading. This is the second coat. This is the Griff Charger Grey. It's a slightly more bluey greeny tone and the beauty of these paints is the more coats you do the more opaque the color gets so what i'm doing here is in certain areas i'm building up this second coat uh, just to make the paint a little less transparent more opaque it'll darken it down it'll darken the recesses even more it'll add some variation it will of course dry patchy because i'm taking this neat from the pot i'm not putting it on the wet palette i'm not diluting it or anything like that just coming neat from the pot and i'm using it to my advantage i want to get that slightly patchy look so i'm going to go around i'm just going around and picking things out at random here uh, just to give that slightly bluey greeny tinge to Once that first coat of Griff Charger Grey has dried, it's time for me to go in with the second coat of Griff Charger Grey. Now remember, this is going to be our third contrast coat. 
but it'll be our second coat of Griff Charger Grey. Now I'm not going to go over everything that I just painted a moment ago. I'm just going to go over certain areas. Some are happy to have two coats, some I just want one coat of the Griff Charger Grey. And again, it's all about variation. I want to have different shades and different sort of depths of colour. Now at this stage, when you do like a single coat of a contrast paint, you're using a contrast paint. When you start to build up multiple layers and change the opacity, so you make them less transparent because you're building up the pigment on the surface, you're kind of pretty much doing glazes at this point, although you're doing glazes with very thick glazes, not water thin, millions of layers to get a bit of colour glazes. But technically at this point you're kind of glazing in a way. So it's like a baby's first glaze kind of thing. But I'm just, again, putting these in certain areas just to build up some areas darker than others, give some more variation, make some of the colour more opaque. That variegated colour look. I want everything to look nice and interesting and not all just the same and uniform. Once that's dried, in some areas, it's time to add a fourth coat of contrast paints. And for this, I've gone back to Space Wolves Grey because it's a neutral, not particularly green or blue grey. It's just a nice neutral grey. My intention here is to darken things down. I don't want to lose the effect that I've already got from the contrast paints and from the blue-grey tint from the Griff Charger Grey. I just need to darken it. And where Null Noir will be a bit too drastic, this contrast paint is just subtle enough that I can darken things down without tinting and changing the hue or the tone at all. Once that's dried, it's time for me to go in with an actual shade. I'm going in with Nuln Oil this time uh, for two specific reasons. First and foremost, on bits like these on the railings, I want to create a kind of rubber or plastic look. Uh, and Nuln Oil is brilliant for that. It's, it's still transparent, not as transparent as a contrast paint, but built up over one or two layers, you can get a proper sort of dark, plastic or rubbery look and it's really nice for things like that so I'm putting it over the certain areas where I want that effect also over things like the jerry cans I just need to use a shade on the jerry can to get some recess shading and that's what I'm doing here I'm dirtying it up and putting some darkness in the recesses and I'll be painting back over these to bring them back in the highlight areas later on so I'm doing a bit of shading and a bit of making things look like rubber or plastic with null oil Once that first coat of Null Oil has dried, it's time for me to go in with the second coat, but only on the tyres. I'm trying to double down on that rubber effect, and a couple of Null Oil coats can really give that kind of rubber tyre effect. Now, the next thing we're going to be doing is painting with Celestra Grey, which is a light grey base coat. You might be wondering why we're going to be painting with this. We're going to be painting some black and white checks on the roof and on the missile launcher. Now, the thing with painting white is that white paint is basically made of ass. And if you just try and paint white paint over any colour that isn't neutral and very light, you will just have sad factory. So whenever you want to paint something white, the golden rule with your spraying or brushing is to base first with a neutral light light grey colour. Not a bluey grey, not a warm grey or a cold grey. I mean you can do if you want, but it will affect the white. White's very transparent. Celestra grey is perfect because it's a nice, slightly warm, but most of all neutral grey colour. So I'm going to do a couple of coats of Celestra grey on the roof here, just before we go ahead and do anything else. I'm also doing the same with the Celestra Grey on the fairing at the front of the missile launcher here. The reason I'm doing this and what inspired me to do this was I suddenly thought missiles. Missiles is Torg. Torg always has a checker pattern on it somewhere. This is yellow. It's a bit like a New York cab. Let's do black and white checkers for Mr. Torg. There you go. And I'll do two coats of this to get a nice solid colour. 
The next step is to go over with Ulthuan Grey. This is a layer paint, and if you remember I've said before, the layer paints are transparent, whereas the base paints are a lot more opaque. That's why base paints are good foundations. They used to be called foundation paints. What I'm doing here is I'm going over with the Ulthuan Grey. Now, you could, if you wanted to, just go over with a white colour at this point. This is a, an off-white. But the problem you might have is that if you paint something bright white, you then can't add any highlights to it because it's already bright white. So I often like to hedge my bets and go in with a just off-white colour first. I mean, we are going to be weathering it and beating it up a little bit, and it's going to be a dirty used vehicle, so I don't really mind if it's not bright white. So if you're not sure, it's always best to go in with something like Ulthuan Grey and grey first get it all painted up then if you want to make it lighter you can by going over with white but if it's light enough and when you've weathered it it looks just like dirty white then you're fine you've actually got somewhere to go you've, you've not cornered yourself now because we are making this a dirty weathered vehicle this will make a perfect sort of weathered dirty uncleaned white color Now it's tricky fun times, it's time to paint the black checker pattern. Now what we're going to do is basically paint in the grid and then fill in some squares. Now I have been wanting to practice my freehand skills for a while, so if I happen to have a black and white checker pattern decal around, I could have used that. However, two reasons, I don't have one, and like I said, I want to try and work on my freehanding skills. And checker patterns are one of the more simple patterns that you can paint. Now we're lucky here because there are these rivets all the way around the edge of this piece. So logic says if you've got something you can use as a guide, use a guide. The trick is I've got some Abaddon black paint. That's what I'm using. It's on my wet palette, so it's already hydrated. I've thinned it a bit more than normal and you want to be using a nice pointy fine brush. This is a small layer brush. You don't want to go too small because if you go too small your brush won't hold much paint and then you're refilling it all the time and you don't want to be starting a line halfway through. You want to get a whole line done and then refill your brush. So I'm just going through very very lightly almost not touching the brush to the surface and I'm just trying to get some reasonably nice straight lines. Doesn't matter if they're a bit wibbly wobbly don't worry too much as long as they're roughly in the right place. Handy tip if you're trying to paint a straight line, orient the piece so you're moving the brush down towards yourself. It's the easiest way to paint a straight line. And of course, like you can see, I'm doing with my little pinky finger here. Anchor both hands so they're both stable and not moving. Now again, don't worry if it's a bit scruffy and rough around the edges. We're just trying to get in the rough basic lines at this point. One thing you're never shown on professional videos is all the back and forth tidy up and clean up that they do to make everything look great. And there is a trick that will make it look brilliant even though it's a bit shonky later on, so stay tuned. I will of course be doing the same on the missile launcher as well. Once the grid pattern has had a few minutes to dry, it's just a simple case of going in and filling in the squares you want to be black. Again, I'm using Abaddon Black. It's on my wet palette to give it a, a bit of fluidity, and I've, I've got it a little bit thinner than normal just to help it flow. You want to do two thin coats here rather than one big fat thick coat because you want this to look smooth and you want to be able to control where the paint goes. Now, don't worry, you will go outside the line or you will get some messy edges and you'll slip here and there. Don't panic. This is the point at which professionals don't show you the cleanup process. Once you've filled in all the black squares, you'll probably notice that some of them are a bit wibbly wobbly. Some of the columns are too wide, some of the columns are too thin. You've got one bit that's thicker than the other bit, nothing looks even. Easy to fix. Once you've got all the black squares painted, it's then a case of going back and forth with your grey colours and your black colours, covering over black areas that need to be grey, covering over grey areas that need to be black, and just going back and forth, tidying up as you go along. You'll slowly, slowly start to make it look civilised. Now, even when you've finished and you've done all that, you've tidied up some of the black and the white, it might still look a little bit off, but don't worry. The steps that are to come will miraculously cure everything. Okay, it's an hour and a half later, you've spent an hour and a half neurotically trying to get every square perfectly square and all the columns the same width. You, yeah, you've driven yourself to distraction. As you can see here, it still looks a bit hinky here and there, but that's fine because what we're doing now is going to miraculously cure everything. The first step into making everything brilliant is to add 
chipping. If you remember in the last episode, we used Skaven Blight Dings to apply dark grey paint chips to our bodywork. This part of the car is the same as every other part of the car. It's prone to paint chipping off and the grey colour underneath being exposed. That's what we're doing. So I'm just brushing on some paint chips. If you're clever, like I am, and also very lazy, you can use tactically placed paint chips to kind of cover up anywhere where there's a bit of a shonky painting of checkers, perhaps. I mean, randomly, it will kind of cover things anyway. But if you've got a bit where perhaps an edge isn't quite so straight and it's gone a bit wonky, just cover it in paint chips. No one will know. Weathering hides all your sins. Once the chipping's been done, we need to start making this thing look dirty and weathered. And the first step is to add some Agrax Earthshade. Just get it all over the top. It'll make all the whites look dirty. You see now why I didn't need to go for a bright white colour right at the start. The Ulthuran Grey is brilliant. It's, it's light enough and when it gets weathered like this, it just looks like dirty white. So this Agrax Earthshade will just give everything that slightly grubby look. One other thing it will do as well uh, is it will start to sort of blend together the whites and the black. So if there are any slightly rough edges here and there where you've painted white over black and it's a bit transparent, it will start to hide that. It will it will darken the whites and it will soften the blacks and they'll just kind of meld together a little bit and you'll start to look more and more like beautifully hand painted uniform very crisp checkers where before they were a little bit ropey it's now time for dry brushing yes we've got some skaven blight dinge i'm going to get some on the brush i'm going to get most of that paint off here on the tissue ruby 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 this is dry brushing i always do dry i love dry brushing and the reason I'm doing this is I'm going back over the tyres. I don't want them to look factory fresh. If you remember, they were painted Skaven Blight Dinge and given two coats of Nuln Oil, which makes them look like unused tyres. Nice rubbery, but unused tyres. I want them to look worn and faded. So we're going over with Skaven Blight Dinge again. The Nuln Oil in the recesses will sit there and look dark and mysterious and gloomy. And the Skaven Blight Dinge on the raised areas and the edges and the flat bits will just give it that slightly worn away, used rubber look. Sticking with the dry brushing, I've got some Zandri dust. We're going to start creating a dusty, dirty look under the vehicle and on the wheels. Now, as it turns out a bit later on, I didn't need to do any of this because when I actually got round to the end of it doing the inks, I actually painted most of the underside of the vehicle just with black ink to look dark and cartoony. But I didn't know that at this point. All I'm doing here is I'm dry brushing, first of all, Zandri dust, basically over the entire underside of the vehicle, under all the undercarriage and the suspension and all the exhaust and everything else, uh, a little way up the side of the vehicle. This is just supposed to suggest the dry dirt and dust that would accumulate under the vehicle, on the wheels, and a little way up the side. This is a vehicle of war. They're not going to wash it every Sunday. I'm going to stand out in the driveway at Gene Steeler HQ cleaning this thing, or sorry, it's Bandit HQ, I should say. It's, it's Borderlands, dear boy, Borderlands. They're not going to stand there washing it every Sunday. So we're just going to go over, we're going to be dry brushing this sandry dust all over the wheels, the tyres, the undercarriage, just to give it that sort of dusty, dirty look. Next up, we need to do the same again, but this time we're going with Steel Legion Drab, which is a slightly darker earth tone. This is a brilliant colour, especially for dry brushing dirt and earth, because it's kind of very, very similar to Agrelan Earth and Agrelan Badlands, the sort of two crackle colours that have this nice, slightly dry mud colour. So it's a brilliant match for that colour. It's great. If you want to put dust and dirt on cloaks, it's fantastic. Anyway, this is going to be applied exactly the same way, but the idea is that the Zandri dust will be the dust and dirt that's been on there the longest. It's had the most chance to dry dry so it's got a light color this is fresher it's a bit darker so it's going to go on the wheels and on the axles and on the tires but it won't go as far up the side of the vehicle because it's not been on there as long you want it to go from the light color halfway up the vehicle as you go further down it gets darker and darker so this is going to be the medium color steel legion trap this is like the, in the middle color Thank you. 
And with that done, that's all the painting, apart from the headlights, which we've not done yet. That's all the painting complete. And the next step is the big scary one. Ooh, yes, the next step is the outline in which I'm kind of dreading and looking forward to. Dreading because I don't know if it'll work. And I also know it's gonna take me hours and hours and hours, but it's gonna be more than worth it. So I need to test this out. And there's a little part of me that knows this is just a test pig. It doesn't matter if it goes wrong because I can always strip this down and repaint it. But there's a part of me that even on a test pick has kind of invested a certain amount of time and energy and, and passion into it. And I want it to work. I want it to look good. If I mess it up, it'll obviously prove the technique doesn't work. But if I mess it up, I'll just feel kind of bad because I'll ruin the model. So even though it's a test pig, I can't really consider it. A I still treat it like one of my babies. So that's the next step. Now, one point to note, I have finished all the dry brushing underneath of all the dirty mud textures. If this wasn't going to be given lots of outlines, I would use things like pigments and powders to give a more realistic earth and dirt and mud effect. However, because I'm going to be doing outlines over the surface here, the, the weathering and mud and stuff has to be just flat painted. It can't be lumpy, bumpy textures because I can't paint outlines over that. And the idea is that the outlines actually go on top of the weathering because that's how the things look in borderlands. It's all just textures on the model and the outlines overlaid on the top. So I need to paint over or outline over the actual weathering. So I can't use lumpy textured stuff or anything like that, powders and things, because that's not going to work. So yeah, so it's just a simple dry brush job. <sighs> anyway, I'm kind of dreading and looking forward to this. It's now the time for the next step. I'm dreading it in one way because I don't really know how I'm going to film it. So I'm going to do my best for you. Now, what am I going to be using for this? Well, not too much, to be honest. We've got the ink. You saw that earlier on. It's Dr. P Martin's Black Star Ink. I've also got the remnants of some pill packaging. This is some Neurofen packaging, but other pills are available. Anything where you get tablets in a little sort of a blister pack like this, these make great little disposable palettes because they just a tiny amount of paint. I'm not going to use a wet palette for this because this ink is thin enough. You do not need to dilute inks at all. Keep them as they are. For this kind of purpose, they're thin enough. They're a bit like the Vallejo Metal Color paints. They're so watery, you don't need to thin them and a wet palette will just ruin the effect. So yeah, a little pill container would be absolutely brilliant. I'm also going to use my Winsor & Newton Series 7 Triple Aut brush because it's tiny. I want some really delicate work to do on here and I can't be using anything bigger than that. Probably something smaller would be even better, but it'll be fine. So that's what we're going to use. Let's just stop talking. Let's go. I'm not even sure how I'm going to film this, so we'll, I'll, I'll do my best. It may be the camera's at a terrible angle. You can't see much, but I need to get in close and personal when I'm painting this. And I will see if I can do the figures, but I don't need. It depends how well I got on with the vehicle, how delicate I can really go. If I can go really delicate, I'll try and do the figures. If not, I won't ru risk ruining them. Anyway, let's go crack on. <laughs> Okay, now there's not a great deal of explanation I can do in this section, but it is going to be a few minutes long because it's kind of important that I impress upon you how long this process actually took. This is the speed I was working at, not fast. Uh, the trick is really, it's, it's not too dissimilar from edge highlighting, although for some reason, bizarre reason, I'm really crap at edge highlighting, but I seem to do all right at this. Uh, you're using an ink so it's nice and flowy. You don't want to dilute the ink or thin it at all. Get the ink as it is. Don't use a wet palette, that'll make it too thin. It's perfect consistency as it is. You don't want to get too much on the brush, otherwise it'll blob and go bleh all over the model. Now, obviously, if you look at Borderlands models, the outlines and lines that are drawn all over those aren't neat and tidy. They're not crisp and clear. So it doesn't matter if you go a bit shonky on some lines. That's all part of the character. But you want them to be fairly subtle, fairly thin. So you just get the ink straight from your little receptacle or whatever you're using. Don't overload it too much and don't have it too dry. And for most situations here, clear, crisp edges, you're just moving the brush at 45 degrees. You're not using the tip of the brush when you're going along an edge. You've got it just a little bit along the bristles, 45 degrees, so you're not blipping the tip down. You're just letting the ink flow to the edge. And it's just a case of slowly working around. All told, to do the vehicle, the missile launchers, the roof over the cockpit area, and the two figures took me a about eight hours at the bench. Not non-stop, I took a few breaks, but it was about eight hours of work going around everything. 
Now, I did skimp here and there. I didn't bother outlining the underneath of the vehicle because, as it turned out, when I'd done all this, I actually painted a lot of the underside black anyway. The, the, the bodywork, not the, the bits and bobs and the suspension and stuff, but just the bodywork. I painted it black because it kind of had this comic book look. And I did do a few sort of more comic book touches here and there. Little sort of bits of cross hatching and stuff. And on the wheels, I put some, some dark patches on the tyres because it just kind of naturally flowed into a comic book style. So it's a mixture of Borderlands and comic book. But all told, it was about eight hours of work, and it is at this pace. So just use the ink as it comes from your little palette. Get yourself the finest, pointiest brush you can. Like I said, this Winsor & Newton Series 7 Triple Aught is brilliant. And just slowly work your way around. Now you'll see on this bit I do here, in a few places I did go a bit comic book, I followed the edges of some of the paint chips very very finely and delicately with some broken, sort of not contiguous ink lines just to give it that kind of Borderlands feel. Because if you look at the Borderlands artwork, sometimes the paint chips are drawn on. So where there were some paint chips, in a similar way to that you'd use a highlight colour on the edge of a paint chip, this is just sort of comic booking it. Not on every little thing and not everywhere, but just in places where there were big chips. Now what I did do, but I didn't show, is I also filled this dark grey area, that's the chipped area, with some cross hatching just to give it again more comic book feel so some patches like that like on the front fenders and here on the door I did some cross hatching as well but unfortunately I didn't film that As I mentioned earlier, that kind of drawing around the paint chips, I did it here on the front fender as well, and in a few other places. But this is the only time that I used the tip of the paintbrush to draw these little, either these little action cross hatch lines here or the, the paint chip edge, just to give it some comic booky goodness, some cross hatching. And it's just from years of experience of drawing pen and ink and watercolour comic book stuff that I did that. You can see here I'm adding some of the hatching to some of the chip areas. It just gives it a bit more Borderlands feel and it's the only time I use the tip for everything else I use the sort of middle of the brush. Once I'd spent half my entire life doing all the outlining which was fun but very tiring and I'd attached the roof and the figures as you can see here. I painted the figures separately off camera because I couldn't really film that. The last few steps I need to do is the headlights and the tail lights. So I'm starting off with, as before, some Celestra Grey just to block in the two headlights. They're going to be very light colour so I want to get them white first and then add some shading and colour on top. So again, we're painting white, so we start off with Celestra Grey, which is the base coat, just to make sure that the white paint that goes over the top looks nice and bright. I did the same on the tail lights at the back of the vehicle as well. Mm -hmm. 
The next step was to paint the headlights and the tail lights in white scar, which is a layer paint. And if you remember, like I said, layer paints are slightly transparent, but because of that Celestra gray underneath, it only took two thin coats to come out nice and bright and white. Did the same on the tail lights, so they were all lovely, lovely white. The next step is to colour the headlights. Now I've decided that bandits or gene stealers are all French, so we're going to give them some yellow headlights. This is basically a Citroen Technical. There you go, 1970s Citroen Technical. Anyway, I'm going to use a paint that no longer exists. It's one of the glazes called Lamenta's Yellow. Sadly, they no, it no longer exists. It's been replaced by the contrast paints, but it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. Glazes are very, very transparent. And the reason we painted the headlights white, you'll see now, is so that when we put this over the top, like that it's this beautiful bright yellow if you painted it over a dark color you wouldn't really see it now what i'm going to do i'm going to do it coat on coat on coat because it's a glaze like the contrast paints the more layers you add the more opaque the color gets and in this case the more bold and bright it gets now, as well as multiple coats on the headlights themselves, I'll do layer upon layer over little bits of the bodywork around the headlights, slowly building it up just to give it a yellowish tinge, and that will help suggest a glow from the headlights that's casting light on the bodywork. A bit like object source lighting, but exceptionally more lazy. After my 17 and a half batrillion coats of yellow have now dried, it's time to add another glaze. But this is a glaze I've made myself. It's a glaze of white scar. It's one brushful of white scar to eight brushfuls of Lamian medium, which is a glaze medium. It's basically paint with no pigment in it. When you're making a glaze, it's better to use something to dilute the paint, like a glaze medium, rather than just water, which will thin the paint. You want to build up color slowly, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm applying the white glaze to the center of the headlights and slowly adding layer on layer just to give this soft blend between the white and the yellow. You could just plop a blob of paint in the middle there, but all you'd have is a big round blob of paint and then yellow. If you use a glaze, again, you build it up layer on layer and it gets more and more opaque. You can fade paint from one color to another. I'm not quite that advanced, this is real Billy Bones, bare bones, basic glazing here, but it's the basic principle that's at work. For the tail lights, I'm using a different glaze. I'm using Blood Letter, which is this beautiful, beautiful, intense red. Again, it's very transparent, so you can build it up in layers. That's what glazes are all about. The first coat is quite pink and light and will be a little bit darker as it collects in the recess. But what I intend to do is do several coats of this, but I'm going to paint outside the area of the headlight. I'm not just gonna paint the headlight. I want to paint a little bit outside. So if I have, say, three or four layers of the glaze on the headlight, it will get bolder and redder. If I only have one or two layers around the headlight, that will be very transparent and it will look or give the effect of a red glow around the bodywork. And hopefully you can see here that sort of basic tail light glow effect I was going for. Just a couple of coats of the red around the light and then three or four coats of red on the light itself to make the light darker. Now this last step is just taking a shade Caribou Crimson and applying that over the headlights. A couple of coats. The idea here is that it will collect in the recess around the edge of the headlight and go dark. It's a beautiful sort of dark blood purple colour and it'll just give it this wonderful effect where the centre of the tail light is nice and bright and red and the edge is dark purpley red just giving it that red plastic with a light inside look I hope and with those last bits done the spinny thing is out and that can mean only one thing job complete project done yes I'm really happy with how this came out considering the fact that I was kind of not really putting all my effort into it because it was supposed to just be a test pig and not a proper hardcore paint job I'm really pleased with how it came out I'm very pleased with how the edge highlighting slash outlining came out and considering I can't do edge highlighting for toffee I'm really happy with how I did with the inks it tells me basically that the Cesabi will have a Borderlands paint scheme. This is quite 
quite a small model and the Sazabi has a lot simpler armor panels and bigger things I can paint and nice clear edges so I'm looking forward really really looking forward to doing this on the Sazabi. Now I did go ahead as you can probably tell and paint and outline the figures and the fur and bones on the back just purely because they were too small. I tried filming it but they were too small I couldn't get the camera close enough because I had to get close enough to paint them so I just got them done but I was able to do the outline a little bit on the figures. It was tricky because they were quite small but it did kind of work. Overall I have to say using the ink it did kind of go where I wanted it to go. So the big surprises for this project were A I was able to do the ink stuff and it worked and it was all all right I, I need a lot more practice I got away with it being a bit rough around the edges because it's borderlands and that's what it looks like but if I wanted to do like a proper cell shaded gumpler I'd have to be a lot more neat I just have to make sure I don't have to do a proper cell shaded gumpler I was also surprised how a simple shade of Agrax earth shade and a bit of chipping made those checkers on the roof look brilliant rather than a bit shonky but hey happy little accidents that's what you do the base itself was easily finished off it was just a layer of a ghrelin earth well it was painted rhinox hide first a brown undercoat then a big stodgy layer of a ghrelin earth which is the crackle paint uh, and then some tufts stuck on top uh, and that's all been matte varnish with Humbrol 49 matte varnish overall then i would say this is an absolutely brilliant little kit it's not an expensive kit at all uh, don't forget of course if you want to pick this kit up for yourself go to goblin gaming the link in the description below this video you'll save yourself 20 percent off rrp all games workshop stuff is 20 percent off rrp so if you want to pick one of these up or any of the citadel paints i've used use the link below goblin gaming save yourself 20 percent, and i will make a little bit of income off your order because you'll be helping out this channel while you're saving yourself money but yeah absolutely fantastic little kit even if you're not interested in gene stealers at all which i'm not it's just a beautiful kit to build and paint. Now, I was going to put this up on eBay for sale. It's not part of my army. It's just a little fun build, so they normally get sold off. However, I have had some people already asking about that before I'd even finished it. So if they don't go through with it and it does go up on eBay for sale, I'll let you know in the boom button on my page and everywhere else that it is up for sale. So keep your eyes peeled. In the meantime, though, do snag one of these for yourself it's absolutely brilliant now do keep your eye open as well for the Sazabi build that this was a test pig for it is a patreon exclusive series so you do need to be one of my patrons to see it it's the build and paint it's Sazabi paint job and the borderlands paint job as well if you want to become a patron if you're not one already just go to patreon.com forward slash model making guru and have a look there once you're a patron you can access all the patreon exclusive content i will see if i can do a little sort of video build diary update for non-patrons but to be honest i'm not sure if i'll be able to because there might not be that much to talk about it'll be i'm building it it's done so we'll see we'll see how it goes but anyway that just remains for me to say thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this little silly fun build go and try it yourself go and try a borderlands paint job it's great fun uh, but yes take care of yourselves go make something awesome go be awesome yes you there you you yeah, I, I can see you I, can, I may not be on camera but i can see you i do wish i'd put some pants on but go and do something awesome and until next time i will say adios i'm waving every time oh every time i'm not on camera and i say adios amoebas i wave because it's like a pavlovian response Adios amoebas. <laughs>